counter narratives for elite suburban and urban high school films. Dominant narratives are common stories that we hear over and over again. Examples include the underdog, meritocracy, heteronormativity, and the white savior film. Counter narratives are stories that are different in opposition of or alternative to the dominant narrative. Examples include boys playing with dolls and stories of homosexuality. Dominant narratives of elite school movies are usually about collective identity over that of the individual identity, which means that individualism or nonconformity is not allowed. There is usually an outsider student who joins the school but is treated harshly by his or her peers for being different. And teachers or and or administrators in dominant narratives of elite films are usually antagonists. The ac there's academic pressure within the plot of these films. The films tend to focus on the outsider keeping their nonconformity and achieving success, and the outsider usually wins in the end of the dominant narratives of elite films. And how Dead Poet Society is a counter narrative is that Mr. Keating, the teacher hero, is a teacher hero to the students. And teacher heroes are almost exclusively, fo exclusively found in urban films, or urban school films. Mr. King's role as a hero in Dead Poet Society involves getting students to be expressive individuals, a trait that's usually found in middle class or suburb suburban school films. And there are no ca characters or, st or student characters in Dead Poet Society that are considered as outsiders economically or the poor hero. And in Dead Poet Society, multiple students in the film are trying to be individuals and non-conforming rather than just a single outsider. And at the end of Dead Poet Society, one of the main characters, Neil, commits suicide, and the teacher hero, Mr. Keating, is fired and blamed for the death. And this shows that there's not a happy ending, unlike in the dominant narratives. For our suburban school film, I chose to analyze Bopa. Bopa is set in apartheid South Africa in 1980 in a fictional township named Maraca, where the revolt against the apartheid is growing strong amongst, amongst the youth. Mika is a black police officer in South Africa. His son, Zweli, is caught between tradition and what he feels right. Mika wants him to become a police officer and follow his example. Zweli loves his father, but disagrees with the organization that his father stands for in the apartheid. Zweli ends up becoming one of the rebels that his father must fight against. This is typical of the suburban school genre. The middle class child grows up and chooses to resent traditional values and the beliefs of the parent. Where Bopa differs from the typ typical suburban school narrative is instead of a happy ending where the child finds themselves and is rewarded from breaking away from tradition, as well as arrested, shot, and tortured for following his beliefs. In dominant narrative films such as Mean Girls, the teenager is typically rewarded in the end by following their belief system. By choosing to protest, Zwelli is almost certainly throwing away his only, his only shot at a middle class lifestyle. In the last scene of the film, Zwelli has been released from prison and is attending the funeral for the people who died in a protest. His father comes as a supporter instead of an officer and is jumped and stabbed by the crowd. Instead of the parent figure sticking to their belief system, the entire film, Mika changes to be like his son. The parent accepting expressive individualism is also counter-narrative and not portrayed often in s suburban school films. The last shot shows the police arriving to break up the funeral with Zueli holding his fist high. This implies the circle of violence between the police and protesters will continue and Zueli w is firmly on the side of the protesters. Dominant narratives for urban high school films include the white savior teacher, utilitarian individualism, and way too much focus on individual discrimination, and not enough focus is on the systematic discrimination. In both Freedom Writers and Dangerous Minds, the white savior teachers are middle class females with very little teaching experience. They try to advocate for their students and go the systematic route by initially going to the head of school and advocating for their students, but end, in, but end up being shot down by the school system. The women then focus on the success of each individual student. Okay.
This follows the exact dominant narrative that Bullman explains in Chapter 3. He says that the problem with inner-city schools is that they focus too much on the individual and not enough on the system. In the case of freedom writers and dangerous minds, the focus is on the individual class and the individual students. When the school's administration refused to do anything, the white savior teachers took time out of their own day to buy books and create lesson plans that would benefit the at-risk individuals in the classroom. Fame is a great example of a counter-narrative for urban high school films. We've seen 150 students today. They all swear that they have a special gift to offer the school. Do you have a special gift? Yes. Wow. <laughs> Baby, look at me and tell me what you see. You ain't seen the best of me yet. Yeah. Give me time. What makes the 2009 remake of Fame an urban high school counter-narrative? Many things. To start, the school in the movie is an elite performing arts school in the center of Manhattan, and the teachers believe that their students have potential. They are not considered at-risk students while they are at school. They are judged based on their talents. You've got talent. Let's see what we can do with it. Nice. The film has a very diverse cast, and there is no white savior in the film. The characters in the film mutually depend on each other. The student protagonists know that they are special, always try their best, and will do anything to prove and show that they are talented. However, some of the students go to the school against their parents' will, or without their parents even knowing what the school really is. Some of the parents even doubt their child's talent. The students who defy their parents' authority by attending the performing arts school demonstrate the characteristic of expressive individualism which is mostly seen in suburban high school films. Wow, I'm talented. And who in the world told you you were so special? You did. My parents would die if they saw that. They think everyone's practicing cello all day. Everything you want to change about yourself. All the parts of yourself that you keep secret. It's your power. It's who you are. And that is why fame is a great example of an urban high school counter narrative. So this concludes our project on the counter-narratives within school films. Thank you for watching.